everybody. Welcome to Homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, I want to talk about the difference between love and infatuation. But even if you're not dating right now, you're not engaged or you've been married for a long time, this concept applies to many different things in life, not just love, dating. It applies to um, essentially false ideas. Um, it applies to shared fantasies like sometimes we get off on weird paths with different people and uh so i just want you if this would be beneficial to anybody so stick with me okay um i'm doing this because i got a comment and the person needed some encouragement and have mentioned something about a, a failed relationship and so i wanted to just share this advice because this is something that I, thankfully i learned very early on when i was in high school um, the difference between love and infatuation. Uh, essentially, what we're talking about is counterfeit. Okay, what's the real thing and what's the counterfeit? And um, there's some just really interesting things to look into here. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it like this. I have this pulled up. This is from Diffin.com, and they have a pretty good list here. You can find this many, many, many different places, but... I found this article pretty good, so I'm just going to go over some of it. And then I want to show you a couple things that Richard G. Scott has said. Um, and over time, I'm going to just add more and more to this, just like every other topic. Uh, this is on my quotes, A through Z, and uh, it's under love versus infatuation. I'm going to have the actual talks that these come from. I'll put these in the description below so you can go read the rest of the talk in case something just rings true with you and you feel like you need to read more. So uh, let's just, yeah, let's just get into it. I'm gonna st let's start with Richard G. Scott in order. Okay, so let's go to 200. So his first quote, this is from April 1991 General Conference. He's in the Quorum of the Twelve. Uh, he was, quote, Satan will use rationalization to destroy you. So uh, this is talking about things like justification, uh, explaining things away or explaining away your behavior, beliefs, you know, stuff like that. Satan will use rationalization to destroy you. That is, he will twist something you know to be wrong so that appears to be acceptable and thus progressively lead you to destruction. Love, as defined by the Lord, elevates, protects respects and enriches another right when you're in a relationship it's it's you and another person hopefully you you treat that person like another person and don't just treat them uh, as though you, they're part of you uh, as far as like they're just an extension of yourself they're a tool they're a trophy they're you get what i'm saying no they are a separate person and you're together in the relationship and you need to respect one another another elevate the other person protect them enrich them all that stuff okay continuing it motivates one to make sacrifices for another satan promotes counterfeit love which is lust and by the way i want to do another video in the near future about uh counterfeiting because i'm, I'm putting together some quotes in, and I have, I have a new entry called counterfeit um, more toward the top of this spreadsheet. But this is a really important idea. The idea that Satan um, mimics, emulates. Uh, well, not, not so much emulate. That might, that might not be the right word, but you get it. Counterfeit. Create a fake. Something that's not real, but something that kind of appears to be the real thing. And, uh, Right now, with so much deception in the world, with all these different issues and society and stuff like that, this is a really important thing to understand. So Satan promotes counterfeit love, which is lust. It is driven by a hunger to appease personal appetite. So it's selfish, personal appetite. One who practices this deception cares little for the pain and destruction caused another one who practices this deception cares for cares little for the pain and destruction caused another. Okay. While often camouflaged by flattering words, it motivates its self gratification. You know how to be clean and live a virtuous life. We trust you to do it. The Lord will bless you richly and help you keep clean and pure. Okay. So, um, 
this is another thing right here, flattery. Uh, you being told what you want to hear, that there's nothing wrong, you're, you know, you're not doing anything wrong, um, or your your belief system is right when it's not right, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I have actually another, I want to pull this up really quick. I'm starting a new spreadsheet where I'm going to keep track of what I think are important words, vocabulary. And uh, I've narrowed in on the Merriam-Webster Dictionary in Oxford. And maybe I'll add others later on. Um, people have suggested going back to like older dictionaries, and I'll probably do that too. But just for right now, I'm just going to stick with Merriam-Webster in Oxford. So when we're talking about flattery, we don't want to be gullible, right? Gullible. Merriam-Webster, easily duped or cheated. And then Oxford, too willing to believe or accept that except what other people tell you and therefore easily tricked so uh predators you know satan false prophets um worldly forces the powers that be on and on and on they they depend on you to be gullible uh that that's like the best case scenario you're easily duped uh you're too willing to believe or accept what other people tell you right Okay, so let's go back to this. Now let's read his uh, quote from October 1994 General Conference. Uh, these have similar titles, by the way. The one in 1991 is called Making the Right Decisions, and the one in 1994 is called Making the Right Choices. And uh, there's kind of an overlap between the two. I I've noticed that there's some general authorities that will kind of repeat things. And I, and I think it's because it's not because they're being lazy. It's because... They feel the need. They're being prompted to repeat something because people aren't getting it or uh, it just needs to be said again. Uh, maybe a reminder. Okay, he says here, Satan would promote counterfeit love, which uh, is really lust. That is driven by hunger to, to satisfy a personal appetite. Protect the one you love by controlling your emotions to the limits set by the Lord. So allow the Lord to set limits and i know that's hard there you know just naturally our natural man does not want to be limited um but we that's you you gain control you gain more freedom if you limit yourself and you uh, overcome the natural man uh so it's not holding you back it's actually empowering you because he's showing you the way the appropriate way uh to hold yourself back uh meaning the natural man then he says, you know how to be clean. We trust you to do it. Okay, so very similar things. Now, the church on the church website has this. This is from the New Era. So it's it's geared toward the youth. Um, and it's called, I thought I was in love with a young man in my ward. As I look back, though, it was probably not love. How do I know when what I'm feeling is love, lust, or infatuation? And it's it's a short article and I'm going to leave this for you. Uh, I would definitely recommend that you read this if you're single. Um, but also this. It's, this is the same concept right here. <clears throat> this is very valuable. Again, this is valuable. You can apply this not just to love, but you can apply it to other things because you can see the underlying behavior. All right. So let me see. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff here. Okay, we're going to start with the comparison chart. And I better zoom in. Okay, infatuation is the state of being completely lost in the emotion of unreasoning desire. Are you in that state uh, when it comes to politics or, um, you know, just going on strange paths or social issues or whatever? Being completely lost in the emotion of unreasoning desire? And then love. Uh, so here's the opposite, love, an intense feeling of a deep affection. Symptoms, urgency, intensity, sexual desire, anxiety, high risk choices, reckless abandonment of what was once valued. Uh, in contrast to that, love, faithfulness, loyalty, confidence, willingness to make sacrifices for another, working at settling differences, uh, otherwise known as communication. Communication is key. 
you know, if you're dating somebody and they don't communicate, you know, they want to like guard themselves and not open up, you should move on <laughs> until that, or at least until that person matures, if they ever do. Uh, able to compromise so that either both win or at least give the other person's opinion a chance. All right. Infatuation, person to person, reckless commitment to satisfy one's all consuming lust compared with love, which is commitment to another genuine intentions ten, intentions. Think about other person's feelings before acting otherwise known as empathy thinking, Hmm, that's another person just like me. And they have their own desires and strengths, weaknesses. What would it be like to be them? Oh, okay. I can, I can imagine that. And I want to treat them the way that I would want to be treated. So that's what I'm going to do for that person. Uh, this is this is the gospel, right? Okay, infatuation versus love uh, feels like infatuation, all-consuming euphoria, similar to recreational drug use, addictive chemical reactions in the brain, stupidity, uh, in parentheses, cupidity, <laughs> uh, can risk everything for the next hit of adrenaline. Now, really quick. <clears throat> This is something that I've noticed on the channel. There, it seems like um, there's certain people that when they're like looking into things like the second coming, this is what they're really going for. They're looking for euphoria. They're looking for, you know, dopamine hits in their in their in their mind. Um, that which is exciting. That which is sensational. Stop and think about this as you're studying the second coming. Is it because you're trying to prepare yourself spiritually? Are you trying to draw closer to the Lord? Are you trying to see reality? Or are you looking for exciting things and you just want to be exciting and, and this is like more of an entertainment for you? It, it is an exciting thing, no doubt about it. But it's, it's a serious thing and it's based in reality. It's not uh, a science fiction, you know? So anyway... In contrast, love, a deep affection, contentment, confidence, partners communicate and negotiate appropriate expectations, requires a lot of selflessness and polite assertiveness. You're loving your best friend. Okay, result, infatuation, emptiness, consequences of choices made while under the influence of mind-numbing temporary lust, right? Mind-numbing. Love, security, peace, a solid par partnership which can provide the ideal atmosphere to raise confident, secure children. So, again, the same thing. Are you really studying? Are you truly studying, writing things down, putting the pieces together, um, and it's solid? Or is it all just empty and it's based on entertainment and you're just looking for fun? Okay, infatuation, effect. Being controlled by brain chemistry, not the heart. Loss of ability to make rational evaluations of what is true, valuable, and worthy. Love, on the other hand, contentment, stability. Okay, interdependency, infatuation. Cannot be sustained without some portion of love and physical attraction. Desire to be always close to that person at any cost. And uh, by the way, this gets into like not letting the other person, like pulling them away from their family and friends, uh, trying to isolate them. That's not good. If, if you're dating somebody that's doing that, run away. Find somebody that basically it stems from um, insecurity, one, and uh, also the desire for power and control. These people, infatuation is basically, if you want to go further with it, it's basically just... Uh, toxic love, whether it's a narcissist, a psychopath, a borderline, a histrionic, and others. Machiavellianism, it, it's not a personality disorder, but it's like bad people. Um, stay away from people that, that, that are prone to infatuation, whether it be in love or whether it be in whatever topic you choose. Politics, you know, people that go off on rambling things that... Um, and I know I ramble, but I'm talking about people that are just like consumed, you know, by Facebook memes and arguments and um, just like, 
I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? Just like going off like the deep end, essentially, instead of being measured and, um, you know, keeping your emotions under control. Uh, anyway, so, OK, love, on the other hand, partnership can lead to codependency, if not tempered with self-awareness and self-guidedness. Time period. Infatuation takes off fast and furious like a spark in dry grass burns out quickly and can leave feelings of emptiness. Whereas love, uh, it will deepen with the passage of time. And that's the same thing with studying things. It's not just like a fast, quick thing. You have to commit to it and uh, <clears throat> do a lot of work. And you learn things over time. It's not just like really quick and fast and exciting. Um, learn learn how to study. Okay, commitment. Infatuation. Uh, this is temporary in life and goes off after some period. Love. On the other hand, this feeling may continue through one's life. So it's stable and it continues. Okay, bottom line, infatuation is delusional, not real. Love is unconditional and the real deal. Infatuation, patience. In infatuation is of the now. Love, on the other hand, is a gradual process. It happens over time. And I just want to highlight... One thing here, uh, symptoms of love versus infatuation. So talking about infatuation, other symptoms may be anxiety, panic, jealousy, etc. So if you're feeling those things, uh, that's typically not normal in a healthy relationship. You can have it from time to time because relationships aren't perfect. So you're going to have fights, you're going to have stuff like that. But if it's like a constant thing... It's like one of the defining features of your relationship is that there's always jealousy, anxiety, panic, mind games, struggle for control, no communication, very physical. That's not good. That's infatuation. Get away from it. All right. Well, that's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.